welcome to live action star wars my name is james i'm ralph and we are back this week you thought we were taking a week off we are back to talk about all of season one of the book of boba fett uh no new episode unfortunately now but we've got right. a little bit of an off season so we thought we'd just do a it's been a week we've sat with it we thought let's <laughs> let's talk about the season on the whole what our thoughts and feelings where we see it going in the future all of that good stuff Right. Uh, we have two folks in the chat. We have uh, Geek Dad Life, who yep. Jay was on our episode three of Book of Boba Fett. Um, go check out his Fett. channel. And our uh, special bonus episode for oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. holiday special back in November. And my sister, Sarah. Good who, morning, Sarah. Who, I mean, I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna show the box. I mean, then, yeah. Uh, I might do a review sometime soon, but uh, she 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 got me this. You guys, a very very nice gift. Um, it's cool. It's cool. I have uh, I have like one of each color now. Well, no, Ooh. no. I have a blue, a green, a yellow, a purple. Yep. No red. Well, um, and no dark saber. But. <clears throat> <laughs> it's a different beast this it feels like it's something it, sort of apart. you know i i i like the concept of the dark saber i really do mm -hmm. it's a it's a sort of a obvious idea mm -hmm. it's like when jeff johns created other color yeah, exactly lanterns. it's like how it's has like, this not oh, been God. done yet yeah right i'm just not keen on the design really I, I, the 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 sort of like um flat my wife stevie said yeah it's like a it's like a gun clip and i don't oh, like of, of the hill of the hill yeah okay interesting yeah. i think it's i like how different it is um it's you know the blade is obviously different it definitely doesn't feel like it's built by a straight up jedi which i've always appreciated and it sort of works in with that sort of the mandalorian side of things um so i like that it's it is a lightsaber but it's not a jedi lightsaber it's not a sith right. lightsaber where they are all force all the time it's you it's from this warrior race essentially even though we now know that 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 Vizsla was a jedi as well but does yeah, it use like, kyber i don't know i don't know if we know what mm. powers it i i would assume so but then who knows it could be something completely different right mm. i don't I don't hate the concept. It's, it's no. all the design. It's all the design. Because I think I think the thing is, um, it was created for the Clone Wars series, mm -hmm. and I feel like the Clone Wars series is very stylized. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people talk about Cad Bane, and then of course all the pictures came out of uh, altering Dooku. Christopher yeah, Lee looks more like a Clone Wars face out. Oh my god! Yeah. So for me, no one I did it. Like... No, my my biggest thing is always Obi Wan's beard. His like a very angular beard. No one did that yeah. to Ewan. Um, but well, yet, yet, yeah, yet, yeah. 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 Uh, but the thing is, I feel like the dark saber was stylized for the Clone yeah. Wars, and then they did a one-one interpretation in mm -hmm. the live action, kind of similar to seeing. Um, I think I've mentioned this before is chopper in rogue one yeah is is has the dimensions of a the animated version mm. whereas it's, it doesn't it's just feels not, a little it's off, one for it? one yeah. yeah yeah uh i mean and we saw that series of droid in the what was it the last like season seven or whatever it was of clone wars so and mm. it's even there there's some sort of stylistic differences so it's like yeah. You can you can adapt it depending on what visual format you're using, like whether it's one of the animated shows because they all have a different style. Um, right. Those two are closer, but they are still different. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember when I'm... Rebels was coming out, they were saying like they were leaning heavily on like Macquarie drawings and stuff like that. Right, and you need to right. just look at the ties, and you go, yeah, okay, they've got that sort of that wider sort of profile. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, just want to just say oh. good morning to Fets uh, right here. Fets, who does a live show this early? It's not early for me, man. Like it's yeah. it's half three in the afternoon. We're we're a, we're an international show. Uh, thank it's... you for joining us, though. It's always nice when people do join us when it is super <laughs> early for them. Yeah, yeah. There's no Boba Fett to watch, so yeah, we're here. Yeah. We're here. Um, uh, um can we? I, I, we want. I want to get into it. Um, 
I mean, I don't think like now that I have had time <laughs> to sit on the Boba Fett series as a whole in its yeah. entirety, I don't think any of my um, opinions have changed. I feel like uh, where I sat throughout this throughout these uh, seven episodes, I feel kind of the same now. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I want to say that the only thoughts I have about this series are sort of center around the complaints online. Yeah. The And and the thing is, I mean, I could get into them because I'm, I mean, we like to keep things positive, but there's room yeah. for critique. Absolutely. And, I feel like we've thing... both got critiques for this season as well. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But I feel like the critiques online are just, petty bullshit um i it it makes me want to defend the show even even elements that i don't necessarily love because i it's it's weird to say but it's just like it's okay to critique things it's good it's like when it's constructive and you've got a point to get across then cool great and it's also okay to just not like something but to to (laughs) rag on something for the sake of it it just it's just lazy almost <laughs> it's it, the 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 thing that cracks me up is i feel like the show is great um i had issues with the final episode and i think it's mostly due to the fact that you're doing the final act big mm. action scene and that's it like yeah. in any other in any other format i would feel natural moving right into that but we're yeah. having to wait a week to then just three start weeks up with this. Like three yeah. weeks based on when we got the last oh, yeah. like development yeah. of that bit of the plot. Um, and that's one of the one of the one of the things that I, I agree with is the is the sort of weird lack of Boba Fett in those episodes. Um, especially from people who've been waiting to hear more about this character. Um, but the 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 main complaint I saw with the finale, which is absolutely utterly bonkers, is that one of the characters Oh. James, one of the characters spins around in a circle and fires his gun. I, I kind of want to do a, in a shot right now. In a shot that's probably a second and a half, maybe yeah. two seconds. It's in yep. slow motion, I think. Perfectly gifable, though, isn't it? Oh yeah, but I mean. So okay, here's here's my I take. Can't, I can't, when I first I can't get over. It. First okay. time I watched the episode, I I saw him I saw him do a spin and I was like, that was a bit of a weird choice, but it was fun. And then the yeah. second time I watched it, I was like, I love that. I think that spin was excellent. It's so Robert Rodriguez. Um, and I like all the the people sort of shooting back with like all of his spins that and flair that he puts into his gunfights and stuff. Um, you've got the people breaking it down, just going, look, he was just avoiding this blast, but whatever. It was cool. These kids because they're kids, are all style over substance. They have been since they were introduced. And so, of course, he's going to try and do a spin and look, make it look cool when he's shooting back. Um, right. I, I had no problem with it. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was <laughs> silly and fun. And yeah, spinning is a neat trick. It, it, but yeah, so just the thing I saw so much of on Twitter in the last week was yeah. that that two second moment and it, it 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 drove me nuts i'm like i can't believe this like no one I mean, is it's... talking nobody's talking about story nobody's talking about um like implications of things or anything no one's talking about anything they're talking about this if whether it's should be in there or not the, everybody's the only... an editor and it drives me nuts yeah uh, the only sort of criticisms on that side of things that I've seen that I, I thought were totally valid uh, to have was uh, it was on the, the Ringiverse podcast. They talked about the themes. They they very quickly brushed over the the, the spin move. Um, and they, they were talking about those sorts of things. And they had some criticism. They also had a lot of positive stuff to say. And I was like, that's that's great. That's good. You know what's important to talk, what's worth talking about, and what isn't, <laughs> right, um, right? But it's it almost became a game this season of on the, the show. Like after your first watch, we were almost sort of going, "That's going to be the thing that the internet goes nuts about this week." Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's sad. Well, we even should, in episode we episode five, yeah, five episode six, where I said I can't imagine anyone <laughs> having an issue with this. 
and it just kept uh, the the issues were nuts yeah nuts. Um, um you were talking about you're talking about the pacing and everything and how the that last episode felt like the the last act but then yeah with no nothing to to end it i think we we were talking about pacing and structure and i think that has been the biggest problem with this season um was the structure and the none of the content but the way that it was presented to us i think um i said it i've been saying it for the last few weeks that i think it almost would have been beneficial if they had just said that this is mandalorian season three or mandalorian the book of boba fett um just to sort of temper people's expectations and to allow them to have those couple of episodes in the middle there that were the mandalorian um and then we were saying that on the episode we had jay on was that episode two or three i can't remember um three the the flashback stuff would have been i i think better served as one whole episode that we sit with that and then we move on and we we progress in a more sort of traditional linear format like i think that would have helped i think just watching them all in one chunk i think would benefit yeah also um you know the the story presented is fine take out any of the credits smash them Uh, all together yeah and it's like a great long movie with Mm. a with a nice fun finale yeah um it'd be like it'd be like you know watching star wars in in chunks Mm. and waiting a week for just the death star Mm -hmm. trench run like it's it's essentially the same amount of time is being presented to us it's just that weekly format and i'm sure people are saying well why don't they just dump them all at once um I'm so glad that streaming platforms yeah. other than Netflix have sort of seemed to have moved away from the, the binge dump all at once because you don't have that the discourse. You don't have the, the chatter for better or worse. Um, like this with this show, I think more of it, the louder ones at least were worse. <laughs> um, but doing this show week to week was great and I think even on one yeah. of the episodes that you didn't enjoy quite as much in your first watch, having chatted about it then sort of you said it at the time like i think elevated how much you enjoyed it i it definitely right. did for me and even with our other show invincipod which everybody should go check out um they dumped the first three episodes at once yep. amazon yep. and that week was rough uh-huh we were we were recording we did three episodes in one week didn't we yeah mm. yeah so um so i i, I you know coming from podcasting about lost like the weekly thing is great yeah um except with lost what was great was it was theorizing it was yeah it was a community coming together to try to figure things out instead of <laughs> instead of nitpicking the weirdest things. absolutely and i i mean you did it with uh when you guys on damalas covered sweet tooth and then <laughs> the show that shall not be named um, you you just picked it week to week, and you just said, yeah, okay, these. Well, I mean, Sweet Tooth all came out at once, but you just said we're just going to do one a week, and yeah, I and we were like it, way I was, behind too. Yeah, and I I watched along with you. I think I might have finished a couple of weeks before you guys did, but I yeah. watched along with that because I enjoyed. I had no one else that I knew that was watching it that I was talking to, mm-hmm. so listening to you guys. It felt like the old days of listening to you guys after an episode of Lost came out or listening to Jay and Jack or Transmission or any of those podcasts that I loved. Like, And that made that show so special for me. And it really was. Right. It's that community aspect of it. And right. it's it's why I love podcasts and podcasting. The, 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 the thing that's rough is like I, I've never really subscribed to Star Wars podcasts. Um, no, I've dipped in so and out. out there. It's yeah, hard. I've dipped in and out with odd ones occasionally. Uh, I've got a couple that I subscribe to now. Um, yeah. That I think, but none of them are your traditional sort of like, here's the news or here's the thing. It's, right. I, I, I mean, it's what we did. It's like ours is quite broad, but it's, you got to find that niche, I think. Um, yeah. Find it, that it one was, thing. So with this, with us doing our show, I started poking around and checking out what else was out there and see what Mm -hmm. people were saying and seeing how like we sort of fell in line with um, how their shows are presented and how our shows Mm -hmm. presented and stuff like that. And through that, I found like a lot of like positive podcasts and was listening to pods like 
those. I'm like, okay, I like these guys. They're having a, a good conversation. And then like throughout the course of this show, like some of those podcasts started getting negative and I stopped listening. Yeah. Um, and it was, it's really tough. And I know like, I don't. There's a few shows. Do. There's a few shows that I have listened to that I have just gone. Okay. I'm not, I don't need to listen to <laughs> your episodes about the shows as they come out. I love the shows. Yeah. I'll listen to your regular episodes. Um, yeah. But I don't, I don't need to listen to these what are for them their sort of their bonus yeah. episodes their their sort of side hustle whereas yeah. for us this is sort of the bread and butter that we've been waiting to get to the whole time yeah and that that was like kind of the whole thing with building this show is uh the positive attitude and so i'm not saying that everything needs to be positive i'm not no. saying that everything needs to be uh sugar coated but the the like at the heart of star wars it should be fun. And it sounds like some people are just like, they can't, yeah. they're struggling going through this. And you mentioned the show that should not be named, which is why the last man yeah. which we covered on Darmalars. And that show took a nosedive real fast. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't, we you barely hated, finished it. You barely we finished it. Watching yeah. it. Yeah, I didn't, like, I didn't finish it. I, I love that comic book. Um, yeah. It's one of like, and I've, I've gone back and reread most of it when the yeah. show started um and I, it still holds up it's it's problematic it's nearly 20 years old now there's some issues but it's still a great story and a great thing and it that's makes it more disheartening that it was so i thought so right. bad the show was so bad but um, i feel like as yeah. as podcasters because me and ben started in 2006 mm -hmm. so we've been we've been at it for a while like mm -hmm. this, that was the biggest challenge. And the challenge for us is to be, is always been, we're just two guys talking about this thing we love. Yeah. And now we're presented with this thing that we thought we would love and then didn't. And so like, if you want to hear me struggle with being positive, go listen to Darmalars. <laughs> yeah. The way the last <laughs> man last episodes minute. anyway. Um, um, but then but as Jay, as Jay mentions here, it did lead to your get back episodes, which were excellent. Yeah. And just those, tons were, of fun. those were a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. And, and so like what was great about book of Boba Fett is that I went from watching a show that was just top to bottom, horribly done. Yeah. Squandered, mm -hmm. not great. <laughs> and just being beat down. But then we did get back and I was like, Oh, I love it. It felt weirdly thematic it's, as well because of like yeah. the story of the Beatles at that point as well and how you know they they Getting were pushed to the brink. <laughs> yeah, and they'd just be like, yeah. "Oh, we still love doing this. What are we talking about?" Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, it was also those came out all in a week. We decided mm -hmm. to do s separate them out by week because it was like eight hours or something. Um, and it was so right over Christmas came... and the holidays and everything as well. So, yeah, yeah. So when Book of Boba Fett comes along and I'm sitting here watching it, I'm like. I'm having so much fun. Mm. This is great. This is not a squandered thing. Like my, from my perspective, I was watching, you know, Citizen Kane of TV shows because I had just gone through uh, the worst, <laughs> which is yeah. why the last man. Um, so, you know, you, you, when we were reviewing why the last man, I kind of gave it shit on Twitter. I just said, mm. it was, show is not good mm. and the showrunner found my tweet and started coming after me and i i was a little taken aback but at the same time you i saw other people from the show talking about how much time they poured into this and how much no one put into this no everybody one sets out to make a bad thing no. And so when I hear people complain about what they complain about in Boba Fett, I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys, no, no. And these it, people do a see lot it. Of people, a lot of people work, a lot of yeah. people work on this. We're going to, like every show, uh -huh. but what was presented to us was a really good Star Wars show. It's a TV really, show. Really fun. I grew up in a time where TV shows were Knight Rider yeah. and A-Team, yeah. like just weekly procedural like just fluff yeah with with th paper thin stories each week we've, and we've, this has so much more depth and i'm like i wish i wish everybody could have grown up in the 70s and 80s like 
We did. And, so and like most of the 90s as well. Like whether you want to say it was The Sopranos in 99 or Lost in 2004, like whenever you, for you like peak TV started, whether it was Game of Thrones in 2010, like whatever for you was that sort of that starting point. Like, I think most people can still agree that we're still there. Like we haven't come down and yeah. this show fits into that. Book of Boba Fett fits into that as this high production value, like cinematic show that you know yeah. you you edit it down you could make a movie out of it so we're getting that and we're getting that on a weekly basis right like and star wars come on again this is going to be brought up at the end of the show but we grew up with no star wars mm-hmm. like it, it, it after return of the jedi it was it was dead when i was born it's, and it was 10 yeah. years before the special editions came yeah. out like yeah it's just like, oh my gosh, like you just got a Star Wars show. It's it's uh, like talking about the colors of speeders. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. The colors of speeders. <laughs> Star Wars is a property full of schlock and weird creative decisions. Always has yeah. been. Right from yeah. the jump. Like, And yeah. we love it for that. For those same reasons that people are like shitting on it. It's the same things that brought you to it and made you fall in love with it at whatever point that was that you did fall in love with it. Yeah. Um, we're all, we're yeah. all sort of, uh, we're uh, used to the cantina. Yeah. At the time, the cantina was a huge deal. That's all people were talking about mm. were just the insane. Um. And because it was only in theaters for those first few years, like uh, for a long time, you could only see it when it was in theaters. Like it would be a case of people going and saying, oh man, did you see that background character? Or what about those two over there? Or what about the Wolfman? Like these things. And it's like, you started (laughs) getting to know the names of them because of the toys, but. And the book. And the the books. But I mean, that came out later, I would have thought, wouldn't it? Or. Or the, the audio the, drama the and tales, like the tales of uh Moss Moss Eisley Eisley. Eisley. I mean that was yeah. in the nineties. That was that was still years later. Um when people were watching it on video and you could pause it and you know pick out these things. But for that first block of time, it was a case of mm. they're there, and if you miss it, if you blink, you might miss some of these characters that we all now know and love. Um right. like like we got Mayor Mok Shayes in this, we got an Ethorian with a voice box. Mm-hmm. But Ithorians have been there since 77 and to see them actually have a speaking role, have a character is <laughs> yeah. in live action is pretty cool. And it, I don't know the, the, the charm the of that. Return, hasn't... Like the thing else I was thinking about, like we saw Cammy and Fixer. Yeah. Oh yeah. I completely like, forgot. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we saw <laughs> yeah. Tashi station it, like, and it's now like, it's been canonized. It's been mentioned of course. And we watched and covered the, uh, the deleted scene with the Star Wars Minute guys. But yeah. then just a couple of weeks later, we got it in the book of Boba Fett and he's there and they've recreated that set and it looks amazing. And there's a very good chance that they've built that set and we're going to see it again. Um, it's it's so cool. And yeah. You think Cameo we'll see Fixer. it in Obi-Wan? We'll get I, I, Cameo Fixer and Biggs? I don't think Biggs we'll get... Tank? I mean, Biggs and Tank would be amazing. I don't know. Um, we'll just He's just got that real sort of... Thin fourteen-year-old's mustache it's or something. Just coming in. Um, yeah, he's just coming in. That'd be great. Um, but I mean, that's the sort of thing that they would do because Cameo Fixer weren't named. They, it was there for people like us who, you know, we're watching a podcast the week after, or you guys who are watching a podcast the week after us who are doing a podcast the week after the show has ended, like six mm. weeks after that episode. And you know, I feel like at that time people were still on board with the show. They might have. I think the criticisms in episodes one and two were more constructive because they were about pacing and plot. They weren't the mm. nitpicky things, and that right. was totally fine. I was okay with those sorts of criticisms, but it's 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 the Jar Jar effect. So everyone yeah. likes to use Jar Jar as a shorthand for the problems with episode one. Um, he's not the problem with episode one. There's other issues. Mm-hmm. Um, I have come to terms with those issues and have been enjoying episode one. Um, so it's just like this weird shorthand. So when you say biker gangs and spin moves and it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know mm. what it is, but uh, it's there's weird, so isn't it? much. 
there's so much good in the show. Um, there's I mean, something... and, and it might just be that we sound like two old farts who are, are just overpraising. And I'm sure that to a generation of people or to certain subsections of fans, that that is what we sound like. They they think that we're shilling for the Disney stuff. It's like we're so not shilling here's... for the Disney stuff. We're just excited because there's new <clears throat> Star Wars. Also, we don't need to dwell on the things we hate. Yeah. And there's something that I brought up to James this week that I should have probably left for the show. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think I bought I bought something up because I left it off of my notes. Well, I didn't leave it off my notes. I forgot to mention it last week. Um, um, there's something in every episode of the Book of Boba Fett that I don't like, and I mm. haven't brought it up once, um, mostly because I don't think it'll lend itself to any sort of compelling conversation. No, nope, I don't think so it's either. Just, it's just an opinion. It's something I don't like, and that is, and I love the dude. I love the dude and his music, but I really don't care for the theme mm. to the book of Boba Fett. I don't like it. The, the, the chanting <laughs> is I'm, I'm, I'm sort of okay with it because of the sort of Maori. The, the, of... It, it's sort of a bit Maori. It's a bit um, like native American. I feel like it's got right. all of those elements that they've used for the Tuscans. Um, right. I kind but... of enjoy it. It, it, it Episode one, it stuck out to me and felt a little bit weird. From episode two onwards through six, um, I enjoyed it. And it, it, I, it gets hyped. There's a moment where it sort of has a drop halfway through. And, and I really enjoy that moment. And I, I think it's a pretty good theme. I don't know. It's not I my favorite, it, I, but it's it's okay. I think I like it more in the opening. when Just when it says the, the title and the so, episode oh, title. Yeah. Yeah, that's that I think is OK. I think it's the end title that gets me. It sounds it reminds me of like something you would hear at medieval times. Yeah, very fancy. That. And this comes it to is your very note. fancy. This comes back to your note you took last week that you didn't um, you didn't talk about. No. So the th well, in the final episode, they play the theme and it now says the words Boba Fett. Yeah, which it, it, uh, I hate it. I laughed at it yeah. and I didn't, I, I was, but I was, I felt okay with it because already I was like, I, you already I, didn't I, like it. I, I enjoyed it and I hate that. Like, I, I like, I don't give into hate. I'm not going to give into the hate of it, but <laughs> it's, it's my least favorite bit of Star Wars music without yeah. a doubt. I, yeah. I really, really didn't like it. It really pulled me out of the second. Ooh, I'm gonna say your second, oh, your second okay. least favorite. Jedi rocks. Come on, dude. Oh yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. That doesn't yeah. count. That's 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 a song within the. That's diegetic music. It kind of it kind of counts. It, it kind of does. It's still count. Star Wars music. Yeah. Um. So, this but that's just a band thing. that I would never listen to if I was in that universe. Whereas this is just music that I'm hearing yeah. while watching it. You want the you want the Max Rebo like original. Yeah, or even like members. I'll take I'll take the the Max after he's left that that cover band that like their third album was pretty crap and so Max just struck out on his <laughs> own and went and found the the Bith who may or may not be figuring Dan. Um, yeah. uh, uh, Jay says the Boba Fett Channing was so cringe. Yeah, it was. I was I was okay with it because like the episode was fun and exciting and I feel like the tone that that song sets was like not in line with the rest of it. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was bad. <laughs> but, but my whole thing was, so they play like when Fennec and Boba Fett are walking through the streets of Tatooine. Yeah. And it's the happy version of the, yeah. Boba, it really sounds like Ren Faire. It does. Kind of fantasy music. I feel like it. it's almost. It Especially with like the kids coming up and giving them the fruit and everything. Oh, like it's, yeah, it is very, yeah. It is very random. Other than that, I've had nothing but highlights to say about the score. Yeah, the rest of the I score is I great. I tried to mention as much as I could, but... Um... <laughs> I don't think... I mean, I think because that theme is so prevalent, it doesn't have that same grab that the Mandalorian scores. Like, they all... Yeah. I think every episode of that sounded excellent. And I think that is just, again, it's, it's a microcosm of the problem, if you want to call it that, of this show. Is that it feels like a spin-off. It feels which, like a or a, a mini series within a grander thing, which it very right. well might it's, be. We don't know if we're gonna get a season two still at this point, but 
I think yeah. the tough I think the tough thing was for them they definitely wanted Mandalorian and Grogu to show up in the finale. Yes. And they had a lot of gaps to fill to get to that point. And I I guarantee you that they had a struggle trying to figure out where to fit that in to well, the story. So but much of it is but, all shot at the same time that there were multiple actors who said, I didn't know what show I was shooting when I came, when I arrived on set for this. Yeah. Uh, I think Ming-Na Wen said that. Um, it, uh, uh, Garza Fwip, um, what's her name? Um, from Flash. Jennifer Dance. Beals. Jennifer Beals. She, she didn't know what show she was going to be on. Like, there's multiple actors on this show. They weren't sure which Star Wars show they were going to be on. Um, mm. And I feel like that's because they were basically shooting a bunch. And the, the those Mandalorian episodes, or at least parts of them, like big parts of them, may have been shot with the intention that they would be season three of The Mandalorian. But they went, actually, no, we kind of need them to slot in here. So let's let's put them in there now. Yeah. 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 Cause then they'd have to like, even if they took those two out, the show would be great. Uh, yeah. we'd be able to follow it. Mando shows up. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's the Grogu of it that you, it. you, you kind of can't do without at least showing him a little bit. Um, right. unless you do that then as a flashback in the Mandalorian, like you have him show up with R2 and then you're like, hang on, what's going on? But then you'd have you'd be opening the door to so much criticism of like a, oh what he was just with Luke for a week or whatever yeah yeah um yeah it's a tough it's a bind it's, it is a bind <laughs> they they work themselves into a bind because I think they realize that they can't go without Grogu for a long stretch yeah um uh, they they can I mean they can it's, I don't think they, they want to I don't think they they feel confident enough in doing that yeah. We'll get a box set. We'll we'll eventually get like a, a steel book. Oh, I mean, eventually Topher Grace will get his hands on all of it and he'll edit it together this thing that is apparently amazing and that none of us will ever see. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can get a season two of this. Yeah. And we could explore the Tuscans more. I'd be um, I'd be they, into a season two. The uh post credit scene was Cobb Vanth still being yep. around, which leads me to believe they'd have more story to tell in this timeline. Call it the tribes so, of Tatooine. Just, just make it Tatooine crime. It doesn't need to necessarily be Boba Fett and yeah. Fennec. Like they can be the the linchpin sort of characters that we know. But then, yeah, mm -hmm. have more of the twins show up. Have Black Crescenton in this. Like have uh, everyone else, um, Freetown and Cobb Vanth and the Tuscans. Yeah, just call it the tribes of Tatooine or something. You've got hopefully at some point maybe Rangers of New Republic. So this could just be the tribes of Tatooine. Yeah. Yeah. Um sure, more Star Wars. I, yeah. I it's 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 um I'm finding also that it's what makes Book of Boba Fett fun is being able to do the show. Like yeah. like I think I think I, I mentioned this on somewhere. I mentioned this somewhere. I think it was our, our Mandalorian recaps episodes mm -hmm. where I felt like I liked Mandalorian. I didn't feel like ever doing a rewatch. Mm -hmm. um, and I think because at the time I was just watching it, but I did do episodes with guests. I was going to say, it you're... wasn't the same. It, it was. It wasn't a dedicated Star Wars show where we were talking about it every week. And yeah. 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 And the, and the fun of doing podcasts for me is speculating and yeah. theorizing. And, yeah. and, and, and of course, 90% of the times those get you know squashed theories debunked a week later which is <laughs> yeah. great i love that though yeah. it's like and yeah. that's what i've i've been saying as well it's like expectations lead to disappointment it's you can yeah. theorize and you can think about what you want to happen but expectations that lead to like feeling entitlement like feeling like yeah. i need to see this thing i saw something on twitter just before we came on of it was someone posting about a character is like i i demand this please and i was like you're using the word demand and please in the same tweet. And I'm like, which is it? Do you want to see it, please? I'd like to see this character again. We all would like to see characters again. Or do I demand to see this character? Because you start demanding things and you're only going to be disappointed when they don't turn up. Yeah. If you ask for it yeah. and hope that it will happen, you're going to feel that joy and the satisfaction when the, they do turn up. But you're not going to be disappointed when they don't. The only thing I demand 
is solo too. That's it. <laughs> That's all I want to solo too. And I'm sure, and the thing is for me, it doesn't need to like be solo too for me. I would, it if it doesn't, doesn't happen, solo, yeah. but if the, a character from solo shows up anywhere else, I'm going to be over the moon. That's, that's over what I was going to say. It doesn't need to be solo too. <laughs> it can be a continuation of the story from solo, whether it's yeah. Kira, Lando, Han, Chewie, like any of those plot points i mean yeah kira and maul and all of that side of things um there's a big old gap in between where we saw them and then where she pops back up now in control mm-hmm. of crimson dawn in the comics um and you know we know where lando ends up but we don't know how he gets there hopefully that's what that series is going to cover um there's there's a lot there's a lot to mine there and it would mm-hmm. be cool i'd like to see Alden back yeah yeah um i'm trying to think if there's there's nothing else i would nitpick about book of boba fett no, um, i mean we, any... we covered every episode like we had criticisms yeah. throughout um but yeah i i there's nothing else that i've got from my notes i like had a quick flick through nothing that i missed out that i wanted to go back and cover um yeah. i've I've purposefully not watched any of it through this last week because I wanted to sort of let it digest and let it sit with me and see my my thoughts and feelings on it. And yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really, really fun show that felt sort of a little bit less than, quote unquote, but that's fine. Like, that's, that's, that isn't a criticism. Like, not everything needs to be on that scale. <laughs> right, and then I, I remember May 1999 sitting in a theater with 17 years of expectations and then getting presented with The Phantom Menace. And it's like, I had issues with it. Somewhere on a videotape is me coming out of the Chinese theater saying like, saying, literally saying to the camera, I need to get this footage. More like episode number two. I did not. I did not care for it right off the bat. Ah, yeah, saw it in the theater eight times. Yeah, because there is always it's, something. It's what you're gonna do. Yeah, I'm like, I like the pod race. I like Jedi stuff. Yeah, uh, I didn't care for Senate stuff or any of that political stuff. But mm. then you watch Clone Wars, and you, mm-hmm. oh, it's kind of interesting. And then you go back, and you're more used to it. Mm-hmm. Um, like no matter how bad you think it is, <laughs> just. <laughs> Just like the stuff you like. Go for that lightsaber battle. Between the the Plagueis novel um, and the Clone Wars stuff, I now really am invested. I really enjoy all of the the political machinations in the prequels. What's funny is, so like, there's a lot of generations of Star Wars fan. There's old guys like me who are original trilogy. Uh, There's There's Dark Times times kids like me who, you know, Um, yeah. It's kids books who, and comics kids were who our love, big, big new thing, yeah. Kids who love Clone Wars, yep. uh, grew up with the prequels, who like books. And what's great about this show was it had something for everybody. Yes. It yeah. had prequels. It really shit. did. It had original... Tri- like when you have Tashi Station and... Cameo uh, Fixer and... Cameo yeah. Fixer, but then like Camino, Yeah. And... Black and Crescent like and- uh Cobb Vanth. Stuff. you know you've got novels <laughs> you've got comics you've got, yeah it's amazing that they managed to do it and you know i think they managed to pull it off like if at the worst i'd say a, a seven you know like i don't like rating things in terms of like a scale um i i've never been that guy but yeah like if you're gonna put a number on it at, at the worst it's like 6.57 sort of thing like i'd say and you know, to get all of that stuff in there, that's pretty good. Yeah, you always say you can't please everybody, but no. they went out of their way to make sure that every you might not love it all, but you'll Wars love was... this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's amazing that no one criticized how Black Chrysanthemum looked, and then the Black Series toy was just revealed yesterday. And oh boy, that's a bad looking action figure. Okay, so, um <laughs> Geek Dad Life yesterday did a live episode covering that announcement of that figure. Oh, okay. Uh, it's 
I, I mean, we don't really talk about toys that much, but um, and I don't really have the knowledge to talk about toys that no. much. But this character or this this figure is awful. Mm-hmm. It's bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's bad. There you go. <laughs> it's right there. And yeah. it's amazing because you'd think, you know, you've got Wookiee molds, you've got, you've done Chewy. All you need to do is sort of iterate on that. You don't need to do too much more. Is there a Tarful sculpt out there they could have used? I don't know if they've like, done it. He's I don't more, know he's of a more Black Series Tarful. But yeah, that big. Yeah. Skinny. Like the yeah. body's so skinny. Also, like, I've seen, thanks to Jay, um, Jay wants us to show the people, um, I would have to have you vamp for a little bit so I can figure out how <laughs> to get this going. Um, but but the thing is, um, following Jay's show every week on Toy Geeks, uh, yeah. Sundays at 9 Eastern with him and John, um, I've seen computer mock-ups of skulls. Mm. Mm. Like, fans will be okay if you post like a, a artist rendering of what the figure is going to look like. Yeah. It, it, it seems like, Oh, this character's big and came out of nowhere. Let's get something up real quick. 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 Yeah. So, so they just did a repaint of a figure and it just looks bad. Mm. It, looks it bad. is weird. So, it makes me glad that I'm not like a diehard toy collector. I'll buy the occasional thing every now and then. Um, more often than not though, it's like gifts. People give me a, a, yeah. an action figure and I'm always appreciative, but like, it makes me glad that I'm not a diehard collector because I can absolutely go, oh no, I'm avoiding that with a 10 foot pole. Okay, um, I'm gonna have you if you can go through the chat maybe and do a little vamping. I, I need yeah. to show this figure, so I'm actually looking it up now. <laughs> um yeah, Fett's Fett's right here brings up the there is a lot of problems with the book of Boba Fett. Uh nothing overshadows the good for me. Live through the prequels and sequels and all aspects of the films. Uh uh, even if I hate others, it's it's yeah exactly. I think you're right on board with us there. It's it's the same sort of thing where there is bad out there, and it's about how you sort of reinterpret it. Uh, I mentioned the the Plagueis novel being what made me really enjoy all the the political stuff, and it's because that that book just sort of goes through all three of the prequels from the behind the scenes. Like we hear about Darth Plagueis the Wise in revenge of the sith but like that dude was there the whole time yeah. there you go look at this look at this okay so mess. for those of you who are listening to the audio feed head over we're at 43 minutes head over to youtube at uh, live and take a look at this figure um and uh let's get some let's get some close-ups on this so look at the <laughs> way the shoulders hang off the the shoulder pads hang it's off just from, yeah uh there's no there's no sort of detail painting on the armor it looks straight They've up like, just given him chewy's bowcaster which does he have a bowcaster in the I, show i don't think so i don't think so either i don't um, I'm having a bowcaster they put the scar on it yeah this, i feel like people would have complained this, this is this is Photoshop. If you, he now, looks like I'm Sean Connery in his red underwear, like get up from Zardoz. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is clearly not this is this mockup is weird because if you look at the drop shadow on the feet, that's not how drop shadows work or the reflection. Hmm. There's no contact. He's completely hovering in the space. So this is clearly a Photoshop thing, but it looks like they put something together for this. I just. Yes. Why? No. <laughs> no. So this is definitely, yeah, this is this is bad news, guys. And I'm not going to dwell on it too much. No. But, no, 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 no. But that's... Again, the, see, there's, the, there's bad stuff out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so I'm not going to get that. I don't have, I don't own any Black Series stuff. Um. They're, they, if I so were when, to get Black Series, it would be Wedge. Yeah. Jackson. Amazing. Jar Jar. Okay. And Bosk. The cool. Jar Jar looks great. So when the, when the Black Series first started, I was working at Forbidden Planet. And so I managed to pick up a few of the, the very, very early ones. Um, super cheap. So I, I've got, you can sort of see them just above me here. Like I've got like a, 
uh, Luke and R2, Han, um, yeah. which apparently are worth loads of money now. But I, I think I've oh. still got the boxes upstairs, but I'm not going to sell them. They, they, they sit on my shelf. They're cool. Yeah. I like them. Uh, and I think the most recent one that I got was when Solo came out. I just wanted a Donald Glover action figure. So I got sure. like a young a young Lando. Because um, in lieu of getting like a Childish Gambino action figure, I'm not going to find a cool Donald Glover action figure anytime soon, I don't think. Right. This is I don't think they're doing a, a toy line for Atlanta. Um, <laughs> I'd buy it though. Just sat on the sofa outside. <laughs> This is this is my probably my most recent Star Wars action figure. Is this Bosk? Power of the Bosk. Force? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake could, Jake could probably tell me. Uh, there's no. It says Kenner China, and I don't. See <laughs> so it's it. still Kenner. So yeah, probably Power of the Force. Yeah. Before the switch over oh. to Hasbro. Yeah, without the broad shoulders, but it's a really good, really nice figure. Yeah. So I'm happy with that. Power of the Force. Too, I still want. Is, Jay. I still want Ken to send me his Bosk since he has way too many toys on his hands um anyway that's toy talk that's toy talk yeah you don't get it very often you had a little bit of book talk in the middle there um you get some toy talk <laughs> this is what happens when we don't have an episode to talk about it's been a while since we've not had the the structure the of shit. that yeah and before yeah wanna... like this is very much just a, a shoot the shit sort of episode do you want to talk about structure do you want to yeah. talk about covering something new yeah absolutely um, so gonna... A bunch of people might have only joined us since the book of Boba Fett. Uh, right. We've been going for just under a well, yeah, what eight months now? Or May twenty fifth. May May twenty fifth. Um, yeah. Did we mention that Obi Wan is coming out on our one year anniversary? Yeah. Well, congratulations. We we've done it, everybody. It's coming out on our anniversary. They listened to us last year when we said that Star Wars Day is May twenty fifth, not May the fourth. Um, it's our one little soapbox that we agree on yeah. and do get on. Um. But yeah, no, so Obi-Wan's coming out, and of course we're going to cover Obi-Wan week to week. Um, there may be, depending on the episode count, you may have <laughs> an episode or two at the end without me on it, because I will be not even in Austin on my trip, I which in which I would try and do it from my hotel. I'll be literally in the air. I'll be, I'll be flying between Texas and uh, the UK, so I won't be able yeah. to do those episodes live, unfortunately. So until then, we're going back to the uh, live action format of picking a thing from live action. Our draft, yeah, awesome, yeah. So James had the last pick, which was our Return of the Jedi episode. It was, uh, yeah, seven months ago. Hey, look, Scott D showed up <laughs> just in time. Hey, welcome, Scott. Here just in time. Um, <laughs> we uh, so um, it's my turn, mm-hmm. and I think we used we were doing it every other week. But I think we're going to come back in a week from today, same we'll time, seven thirty. Yeah. With the, with our off season, if for whatever reason we need to take a week off, we might. But it will never be more than a week uh, at most, and we'll we'll be able to tell you probably in advance. Right, and if we do take a week off, I can always do a lightsaber review. Exactly. Um, I I might finally be able to get Ed to talk about his work on uh, Solo, which would be cool. But we we'll see. But we'll be covering something most weeks, almost every week between now and May. Right. So earlier I mentioned um, how we didn't have Star Wars for seven years. And it looks like we have a fucking Jedi in the stream right now. Because <laughs> someone. He's called so it. Scott G just showed up. Scott D showed up and called my pick. Wow. I don't know how he did it. I had been struggling <laughs> for the last week to figure what I wanted to do. There was one thing I wanted to do, but I found out that it's not really easily read a- available, readily okay. available. I don't know how he pulled this out, but yes, in one week, we'll be discussing Caravan of Courage. Just to kind of in perspective first show, yeah. just perspective to show where we were at when I was, uh, I would have been 10 years old. What year was no, 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 no. I would have been like seven years old. It was seven so or eight. It was 84. Oh, yeah. So it's, yeah. Yeah. The year Ghostbusters came out. No. Yes. The year Ghostbusters came out. 1984. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Rest in peace, everyone. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, cool. So, anyway, but also, 
Jay says, all right, fine, I'll scrub and I'll do my best British accent. Um, I think I may have actually asked Jay already about this. If if uh, if James can't be here for all of Obi Wan, um, uh, Jay will. I, I think I, depends. I'll on definitely be here for the first five. Um, yeah, it depends on how long they go. Yeah, I don't mind. A, I don't mind doing some rotating guests. I like mm. to have Eddie back. I think Eddie was a lot of fun. Mm. Um, That'd be cool. That dude just he loves Star Wars so much. Yeah. He 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 he's a dude that uh that just finds the good in all of it. Finds the good okay. in all of it and can't stand the the toxic behavior. I'd I, um, I mean I'd I'd like to be able to get Eddie back on for the first episode of the season before people have found things to start bitching about. <laughs> maybe um, he should be maybe he should be the finale guy. Maybe oh yeah maybe kind that'd of squash be great. all yeah. that yeah um but thanks to Eddie thanks to Jay yep. for for coming in as a as a guest on our show uh, Ken Plume um, uh, Silver Silver and um, oh we should have everybody. we should have really done some research with this shouldn't we? and, and had a look right. at who else we had there on the season there were seven episodes we did five with guests two yep. without guests so yeah. Eddie, Jay, Ken, Silver. Oh wow, I feel terrible. You should be really feel really terrible because we talk about him almost every single week on this show. And he came in at the most important time, and that's Adam Frazier. We did have Adam Frazier on. It's, it's a yet. very what? special. It's a we left the best for last. We did. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Jay. So sorry, Adam. <laughs> Um, um it was a whirlwind it's been yeah. a whirlwind seven it has weeks. been it has been and adam will i mean if he's not offended we'll definitely be back for <laughs> obi-wan yeah. we're gonna need uh, him for everyone yeah definitely definitely and i don't know if there's gonna be a dave filoni episode it sounded like deborah chow was taking over the whole thing and i don't I'd, know i i, I kind of like the idea of one director doing the whole lot like you get a, a unified vision i think with that i think that'd be great let me ask you because we're both big fans. You're a big fan. Do you think Ludwig Gorenson should sit out this one? I do. I don't think he needs to do everything. Um, yeah. I think keep him in Mando and with like, if you want to call them the Mando verse of shows, like, so this, he contributed to themes. Um, he didn't do the full score, but he, it was definitely, I feel like based on his stuff. Um, this one, this show, the Obi Wan show is going to be different. It's going to be a side thing. I'm hoping um, for a more classic Star Wars sound out of it. I think so. I think something um, more like a John Williams. Um, and I feel like we're going to get like Obi Wan themes from John Williams used in the show. So someone who can do that sort of thing would be good. I'd I'd like to see that. Uh, he didn't do the score for Boba Fett, but he did the themes. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, Scott D said, asks, are we getting a Boba Fett gallery episode? Assuming they do a uh, Boba Fett gallery, uh, Disney gallery, we're going to cover it during. Yeah. It, it, depending on when they announce episode, it. Yeah. Depending on when they announce it, it'll either slot in as the next episode after it's been announced and has aired, or we'll do it as a bonus episode. Um, if one of us has right. already made a pick. So if it's a bonus episode, that means people who are listening to this on the audio feeds, Go subscribe at Live Action Star Wars to watch yep. the bonus episodes. Also, one hundred percent, we're gonna, you know, jump on as soon as we can, as soon as we get a Boba Fett or a, a Obi Wan trailer. Yep, yep. Um, much like we did with Book of Boba Fett, we mm -hmm. we we'll just we go through the time. trailer. Yeah, bit by bit. Yeah. Think so, about what we. I scene. mean. I'd be Your interested eyes. to go back and watch that episode now and see how wrong we were. All right. Um, right. Yeah. Cool. cool. Um, yeah, I have nothing else. Uh, it was a great season. Listen, I, you know, when we started this show, it, I didn't know. I didn't know about it because I was like, man, I don't. There's Neither so many Star Wars shows Boba out Fett there. Fans. Yeah, but like it's like live action Star Wars. Like, uh, yeah. When we started oh, the yeah. show, I was just like, I don't know about jumping into this world, but 
we were doing Invincipod and we're like, we're not going to be able to do another Invincible show for, we still I mean, don't we know. Still don't, yeah, we still don't know. It's going to be a while. And probably. so we were kind of just like, fuck it. Let's just do Star Wars. We'll just do it. Yeah. But I don't want to talk about the comics. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to yeah, talk yeah. about There's no point talking about animation or comics and stuff like right. that. If only one of us has read or has got anything to say about any of that. And it's also like, everyone yeah. else is doing that on such a high level that and then yeah what do we have to contribute <laughs> th- this this so then we started doing we're like let's do video podcast and that was like okay cool okay this is new to me and it's been like a, a little nerve-wracking because i had to do like editing and stuff and then when we decided to go live it was another yeah. thing where i'm like oh shit how's this gonna go but now thanks to the book of boba fett and doing this every week and even though we do it early on my end, mm. it we we figured it out how to yeah, do the, and, how to get it done and how to get it out there. And so like this, and I feel show, like it's made the show better as well. Like I I yeah. like this format a lot. It's fun. I love being able to interact with you guys uh, in the chat. We have a smaller crowd. Obviously, we we're expecting that because there's new new episode of the show. But right. you guys who are here now, like you're our hardcore. Like you're the best. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks to everybody that showed up. Um, I, I'm going to do a little ceremony right now, marking the end of uh, the book of Boba Fett. You're going to close the book. I'm going to close the book, and we're going back to classic logo, classic hey. blue, back to our old look. Um, I still have the Return of the Jedi art up. I was going <laughs> to say, you haven't done a caravan one yet. <laughs> no no that'll be for that'll be for next week um but it's good it feels different doesn't it, it does it does Isn't it has it a different weird? feel yep yeah yeah um that red it was it was boba fret red it was taken directly from mm-hmm. the armor and it, it it's so it's had such a dark feel to it I, this is this is feels very comfortable this blue uh oh, just and I while we're talking about <laughs> while we're ta- while we're talking about um colors and things like that, and we've we've mentioned a few of our sort of favorite people on Star Wars Twitter mm-hmm. and in in the community. Um, Star Wars colors on Instagram is a really really cool hyper specific account that if you are anything like Ralph or I and get a kick out of just seeing these sorts of things, you mentioned Boba Fett red. Um, just go on that Instagram account if you're on Instagram. And it's check it out. It's Star Wars cool. dot colors. Yeah. And they put up like paint samples, like you would see a paint sample card mm. and it'll just be a color and it'll say what it is. And then when you flip over to the picture of what it represents, it's it's so much fun. My yeah. favorite being, oh, my favorite was Lance Speeder Blur Brown. <laughs> and it was the, it was the old. The Vaseline edition. rub. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so good. And then uh, I, I, this week decided to change the logo. Oh um, uh, yeah, I updated it. It, it. Minor tweaks, just minor tweaks. I changed our names at the bottom, which is how it, they're presented on um, Invincipod. Just our names on the bottom. I changed that to have it say James Hewlett and Ralph Apple present, and then live action starts. And I changed the star background to a hyperspace background, and it just pops so much more. I, 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 not to toot my own horn, but I'm like, oh, it looks so much better now. This so much better. Everyone who's listening and watching along, I I get messages at weird times when like Ralph is eight hours behind me. And so it'll be like middle of the afternoon for me. But I know that it's super early in the morning for Ralph. And I'll just get a message through to be like, I'm just doing this. So I I thought I'd tinker and play with this. And I get sent through these things like this new logo. And I'm like, that's so cool. And you just are whipping that up. So everybody needs to thank Ralph for all of the hard work that he does behind the scenes. And all for creating thing. all of our artwork and everything and essentially creating uh, a playing card set or a, um, a trading card set, which one of these days yeah. I want to get them all printed out on nice cards. Yeah, set. that was one of the things I did on my Patreon was I try when I cover the Mandalorian, I, I try to make recreations of uh, Star Wars playing cards using the art from the episode. So when you go to our YouTube page at liveactionstarwars.com, <clears throat> It's supposed to look like it's trading cards. Yeah. So it's great. I um, love it. Get I, I mean, I have all the artwork saved, whatever you need. <laughs> what a what a um, somewhere down the line. Yeah, I think this episode our artwork is the Rancor sleeping with Baby Yoda mm-hmm. sleeping in front of him. I think I'm gonna change it to the spin. 
Cool. I think that would make a great trading card and will look good in our set. Yeah. But that, oh my God, dude, you want me to make those trading cards so bad because the front could be the trading card and on the back could be the the info episode. from that yep. episode. Yep. And by the way, every time you mention, um, like, Ralph, where can you get the shirts? The easiest thing to do, look in the show info. It's right down yeah, here. Yeah, there's a the, link in the right description. There. Yeah. Everything is in there. Follow those links. Um, if you go and listen to an episode with our guests, go to their links. Um, Liveactionstarwars.com. It's got it. It's got it yeah. all on there. And you've yeah. got the list of every like thing that we've got on our list of things that we might be covering at some point. So you can you can be like Scott D and you know try and figure out what we're going to cover next. Ah, that was nuts. He didn't. Even, he just threw that out there. And <laughs> but I mean, until next yeah. week, I think we're going to have to wrap it up because I got to go to work. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Until we get on our caravan of courage, uh, don't give in to hate and celebrate the love. Punch it. <laughs>